Hello and welcome to another bite-sized episode of the Science on the Edge podcast series. I'm Dr. Mark Darcy and in this episode I'm just going to summarise where we stand now in terms of research into obesity. Now first of all, um, I should say that scientists, specifically uh, medics, over the last century got it very wrong. They got things very, very wrong. They gave incorrect advice. And it's literally only in the last couple of years that we started to realize that. So how did they get things wrong? They got things wrong because they treated nutrition um, the same way that uh, scientists treat physics um, and mathematics, specifically relating to energy balance. The predominant theory for pretty much the entire 20th century and moving into this century was that people were overweight because they took in more calories than they burned. Simple as that. Specifically, too much fat. So the fat, therefore, accumulated. Um, Sounds logical, makes sense. If you're taking in more calories than you burn, you're going to put on weight. And there's a certain amount of logic to that. But um, surely you've noticed that there are people you know that eat about as much as you, but they are fatter than you. They're more overweight than you. The fat is distributed differently than it is in you. And there's other people that seem to eat um, less than you. Um, And yet they are put on weight. There are people that are bigger than you, big people that are smaller than you, but maybe take exactly the same number of calories as you in, or even exercise the same way. So there's more to it than just energy in, energy out. But for most of the century, if you were overweight and you went to the doctor, the doctor would advise that you cut out fat from your diet. You reduce the amount of fat that you take in. You try to get rid of the saturated fats that are causing heart attacks and clogging up your arteries. Um, Obviously, fat causes heart attacks um, and atherosclerosis because you look in the arteries and around the coronary arteries and the heart itself of someone who's overweight and you see fat accumulating there. So fat must be the bad guy. Um, It's just not true. It's just not true. And and you can all understand that intuitively. Look at a boy and a girl. As children, before puberty, their fat is pretty much distributed the same way in both of them. The only thing different really about the boy and the girl are what they were and their haircuts and a few other anatomical differences. But in terms of fat distribution, they're about the same. And puberty hits, and women tend to put weight on on their chest, around their hips, on their thighs. Uh, men, if they put on fat, put it more around the, the waist, um, in those sorts of areas. Fat is distributed differently. So obviously hormones play a part. And fat distribution changes as well after menopause. The, the way that fat is distributed in a woman changes after menopause. What happens at menopause? Well, hormones such as estrogen um, are produced in much smaller numbers. So hormones are involved and we all produce different levels of certain hormones have different sensitivities to them so we're all a little bit different um the more modern theory is that people kind of come in three general categories although it's not really three categories there are in-betweens and those categories are ectomorph mesomorph and endomorph um ectomorphs they're more like they're like a greyhound basically they're naturally thin the the hormones the receptors um the genetics basically predispose them to, to not really um, storing that much body fat. They tend to be lean. Mesomorphs, a little bit of muscle, um, but also a little bit of fat. Um, endomorphs tend to put on quite a lot of fat, tend to be quite big. Um, so if your ectomorph is kind of like a greyhound, your mesomorph is a little bit more like um, a wolf, and maybe your endomorph is more like, I'm running out of dog ideas now, um, one of those, one of those huge, um, what do they call them? The big dogs that rescue people on the mountains. The name has slipped my mind and it's going to bug me. Um, but anyway, those very large dogs. Um, so hormones and genetics play a role. But it's even more complicated than that. Um, if we dive into the hormones, we find there's, there's key differences. It's not just things like estrogen and testosterone. It's also things like insulin. You see, um, insulin allows us to deal with any sugar. So if you, you eat some carbohydrates, 
um, the food is digested, the carbohydrates are turned into sugars like glucose released into your blood. Um, your pancreas detects this, specifically the beta cells of the pancreas. They release insulin. And insulin causes your cells to, to take up this sugar um, and use it for energy. And then the extra sugar is basically converted to something called glycogen in your liver and in your muscles where it's stored until it's needed. But if there's even more carbohydrates than that, then the extra sugar, because you can only store so much glycogen in your liver and muscles, the extra sugar is turned into fat. Um, now, insulin basically allows you to produce fat, but it also allows you to, to store any fat that you're eating in your fat cells. Now, the key here is that insulin is triggered by carbohydrates, not really by fat. Yes, it allows you to store fat, more fat in your body, but it's triggered by carbohydrates. That's the key. So in the past, people that were overweight were told to reduce the amount of fat in their diet, and they did dutifully, and replaced it with carbohydrate. So they had more breads, they had more rice, they had things like that. And they carried on putting on weight. Some of them became much larger. The reason for this is that um, because they were taking in so much carbs, they were triggering high production of insulin, huge amounts of insulin, which was causing this, this fat to be stored. So they were putting on weight by reducing fat in their diet. This is where things like uh, the ketogenic diet come into play, which I've talked about in another podcast at length. But in ketosis, um, well, ketosis is caused by a deficiency in carbs. If you reduce the amount of carbs in your diet, but keep fats and proteins the same, but you substantially reduce the amount of carbohydrates in your diet, then you're not getting these insulin spikes. You're not producing as much insulin, which ironically and you know, almost counterintuitively means that you're not storing as much of the fat that you're eating, even though you might be eating more fat in a ketogenic diet. It's not being stored the same way. It's being utilized for energy. So ketogenic diets can actually help you to reduce weight. So basically, um, I mean, a diet that's got less carbs but more fat can make you lose weight. And the medical community and scientists are beginning to realize this now. Basically, when you go to the supermarket, if you're trying to lose weight, ignore all of those low-fat ready meals that you see in the Weight Watchers session, section. Um, I shouldn't say Weight Watchers. Um, there are other people that basically produce these um, low-calorie meals. But the point is, if you see these um, ready meals that say low-fat, be careful because yes, they're probably low fat, but maybe they've replaced the fat with carbohydrates. And if you take those meals, you might actually find that rather than losing weight, you gain it. Okay, so to summarize, um, our genetics play a big role in our size. Some people are large, not because they eat too much, but because they just have a certain genetic makeup. They have a certain predisposition. Um, so genetics are important. Insulin is important. If you take a lot of carbs in your diet, you're going to get big insulin spikes. You're going to put on weight more easily. So you've got to be careful with that too. With that said, exercise is still important too. And obviously not eating too much is also important. Okay, so that's all for now. Um, I look forward to speaking with you all again very soon. Goodbye and have a great day.